to. I call uh, Marima Davidson. Thank you very much, Mr Chair. I really welcome this uh, in-depth and part-by-part -part debate, to be honest. I think that we owe it to our people, um, you know, as we can see, and, and I do appreciate that we're all in the same boat where we are uh, sifting through quite complex legislation, going back and forth, probably getting things <coughs> wrong here and there, but that's what this House is supposed to be about. We really would appreciate uh, the Minister to take the opportunity um, and all members of the House to take the opportunity to actually debate these clauses for our people. This is incredibly important. Uh, Mr Chair, two, okay, part six. Um, I think I met clause 210, part six. I wanted to pick up on something. Again, I welcome the Minister's uh, comment on this. Two, so, okay, so part six, uh, part six is the the operation of governance bodies. Uh, part six concentrates on the operation of governance bodies over land. We go to clause 210. <coughs> it talks about the requirements for a land management plan. So if we're talking about operations, uh, of, operations of governance bodies, if we go to clause 210, the requirements for a land management plan. Now, I, I am quite interested in this particular part of the legislation. If we go, so this section applies and then it outlines uh, how this particular land management requirement, plan requirement would apply. But if we, okay. if we go 210, okay, 210, three, the governance body must have in place a land management plan that. Now, it then, I guess, laundry lists the types of things that the legislation stipulates should be in the land management plan. And I'm interested in this, and I welcome the Minister's response in uh, having this debate here in the House about what, what are the things about this land management plan. For example, if I just pull out a few of these, the governance, uh, the governance body must have in place a land management plan that identifies the Māori freehold land that is managed under the governance agreement. Um, the land management plan must set out any proposed changes that affect the Māori freehold land. Um, if we go down, I was particularly interested in... Hmm, 2103F, the land management plan sets out the risks of adopting as well as the risks of not adopting the land management plan and in respect of a proposition, proposed disposition of a parcel of Māori freehold land, it sets out why that disposition might be necessary, so on and so forth. This is a land management plan that I'm assuming is to be available for our people to see how our land is going to be managed by these governance bodies mandated under this part six of the legislation. I think this is really interesting and should be debated here in this house. Let's pull this apart. Let's have a look at um, this on the face of it. Looks like it could be a worthwhile thing. Mr. Speaker, I think it's relevant in all parts of this bill, but I, do, I would like um, to take the liberty to say that I represent one of many Māori who doesn't have a lot of experience in whenua and land issues. Some people in this House have some incredible experience, which I acknowledge and has been important in the deliberations of the Māori Affairs Select Committee through this bill. I am probably like most of our people who, I, you know what, to be honest, I don't even know if I am parcel, part and parcel to any land ownership. Now, there's a lot of us in the House uh, sorry, in this country, who would be in that similar position. And now I'm, I'm looking through, and I know that we have had these, this clause-by-clause clause debate in this Mighty Affairs Select Committee, but that's very different from having this debate in the public, which is what this House is for. And so um, I, I, I look at this, wow, there's a land management plan. There's many of us who don't even know if we are part of any land management plan, if we are descendants of land, and then we're talking about um, the opportunity to have a land management plan in front of us. I, this is really, really important stuff. Um, and I really would welcome the minister to take, and, and all members, to take all opportunities. We're all in the same boat. This is, look at this, this is huge. It goes all over the place, because then if we stick with, um, 210, clause 210, and go down to uh, clause 2103A. After it talks about the land management plan, this part of the legislation then says, for a governance body's decision to put in place a land management plan, um, and then it refers us to clause 13 of Schedule 4, because 
<sighs> what it says is that uh, the land... Uh, the Land Management Mr. Uh, Chair. Uh, thank you, thank you. It says that the Land Management Plan, it talks about the thresholds, uh, it talks about the thresholds where the Land Management Plan um, applies in certain situations, including dispossession. So then if we go from 2103A then and refer to Clause 13 of Schedule 4, um, and we go down to Clause 13.3, uh, sorry, Schedule 4, Clause 13.3, the decisions for which a minimum level of owner agreement is required, for example, um, and this also goes back to that 2103A, um, the agreement of owners who together hold 75% of more or more of the participating owners. For some pieces of land that could be a, a handful, for some other pieces of land that could be a large number of people. But this stuff is incredibly relevant. There are more than likely situations where our land is being dispossessed, managed, planned, traded, worked, developed with descendants who are part of that particular piece of land. We have no idea. We have no idea. And so this is interesting stuff. How are we actually going to address the disconnection that most of our people have to whether we even own land or not? How are we going to have our people participating and setting up these land management plans? 75% on the face of it seems like a safe threshold, but actually I think we should be aiming higher. And I'm not saying that that's a legislative change for me personally, but I think I'm trying to address, you know, there are opportunities here in this legislation, we're debating them, this is important. I wish the House would debate them fully. In my last time, Mr. Chair, uh, in part now, and I welcome being corrected on this, but I understand that my colleague Mika Faitere's tabled amendments, I don't know how to refer to these, <coughs> on Wednesday the 5th of July, 3 p.m., it's got one and two. I hope that's sufficient reference. Um, and I hope that I am right that they do fall under part six. Um, I'll welcome correction. Uh, it's got clause 206 because I want it again. I, uh, okay, bear with me. Clause 206. Mika Faitere's tabled amendment. Here we go. It goes down to clause 206.2. Clause uh, she's proposing to replace the words as soon as practicable after making the decision the governance body must. She proposes to change the words instead to within one month after making the decision. She's giving it a time frame. And on the face of it, the Green Party would definitely support this. Now, I would like to know what reasons the minister might actually have if he, if he is planning on not supporting this uh, amendment. I would uh, appreciate... I would appreciate an explanation as to why we wouldn't think about putting a, a, an actual time frame on that particular clause, uh, and I should probably should outline that the clause 206 relates to requirements if governance body decides to hold land as Māori freehold land. So um, if, if, on the face of it, I, this seems good and the Greens will be supporting it. I would appreciate uh, some insight from the Minister if he does not plan on supporting it. Like, uh, like, likewise, and again, I'll oh, welcome correction, uh, clause, okay, Mika Faitere's table amendment, oh, sorry, number two, Wednesday, 5th of July, clause 207. Again, uh, I guess just to cut to the point, it puts, it puts a time frame. Uh, it replaces the wording <coughs> as soon as practicable after the sale with within one month after the sale. On the face of it, it I think it sets up a clearer objectives for making those decisions. We would support that. I would really like to understand if the Minister is planning on supporting that, and if not, why. Thank you, Mr Chair. Chair. Uh, the Honourable Tiroa Flavel. Mr Chair, kia ora tātou katoa. Kamehira mō nā.